Hey everyone, this is Ryan here, and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. And this will actually be our last video covering complete dentures, but there's much more to discover in terms of partial dentures and fixed prosthodontics, which we'll be covering in the future. So for this video, we're going to talk about how dentures are processed, and I want to focus on the fact that dentures are basically put pink acrylic and white teeth. And we'll talk about the materials and constituents for each of those in this video. So first we'll focus on the pink acrylic. And we call it heat cured acrylic because instead of curing by light, like in light cured composite resins, the pink acrylic used in dentures cures by a thermal reaction. And the two main components are a powder form, which contains PMMA, which is a polymer, and the liquid form, which contains MMA, which is the monomer. And how I, remember, how I remember this is that powder starts with P, as does polymer, as does PMMA. And then M matches up with monomer, which is the liquid. And so the liquid not only contains MMA, it contains a couple other things that we'll talk about in the next slide. So the liquid contains MMA, which is methyl methacrylate. This is a main component of acrylic. And again, it is a monomer. The second thing is hydroquinone, which is an inhibitor. And that's because it prevents any polymerization of this MMA in the monomer form by itself. So it inhibits this from polymerizing on its own. So that's helpful. The next thing is glycol dimethacrylate. And this is a cross-linking agent. And it's called that because it forms cross-links in the cured acrylic resin in order to increase rigidity and resistance to crazing. The last thing here is dimethyl p-toluidine, which is a tertiary amine, and it's an activator. And it's called an activator because it breaks down benzoyl peroxide into its radical form. And we'll talk about benzoyl peroxide in the next slide because it's a component of the powder. So here are the four things of the liquid and all the things that they do, their function. So these things are definitely important to remember for the board exam, although you may only get one or two questions on this kind of stuff. So the powder contains three things that I want to talk about. The first one is polymethyl methacrylate, which is just adding a poly in front of this because it's basically long chains of MMA, which makes it the polymer as part of the powder. So this should probably say polymer, and that's the first thing. The second thing of the powder is benzoyl peroxide, which we talked about previously. And that's what the activator, dimethyl toluidine, is breaking into its radical form. So benzoyl peroxide is the initiator, and it's the initiator of the reaction, just like it is in self-cure composites. It's actually the same uh, compound that is in the self-cure composites, and it's also an initiator there. And lastly, we have salts of iron, cadmium, or organic dyes that are in this powder, and you could see how this is pigmented to start with, and that's because of these salts. It leads to the, the powder and the eventual acrylic resin to be pigmented. All right, so those are the powder and the liquid. Now let's talk more about how the denture is actually processed. So when a denture is processed, we always have some amount of shrinkage. And this is called polymerization shrinkage. And we talked about this when we talked about composite resin. And in this case, polymerization shrinkage is due to the heat curing process where monomers are being linked together to form polymers. The MMA is being linked together to form PMMA. And very simply put, they become bonded closer together and occupy less space, which makes the the compound as a whole, the mixture, shrink. So if you have too much monomer, you'll get even more of this phenomenon and hence more shrinkage. 
So that's why I say here, you'll have even more shrinkage the more monomer that you have in your mixture. So the ideal ratio of monomer to polymer, you can think the liquid form to the powder form, is about one to three. One parts monomer or liquid to three parts polymer or powder. And porosity is due to underpacking with resin at time of processing or being heated too rapidly. And this is a pretty common boards question, that heating the acrylic too fast can lead to porosity. So heat cured acrylic must be processed slowly to prevent immediate vaporization of the liquid monomer, and that would, um, of course, form porosities because boiling off the monomer too fast will lead to these voids in the material, which render the denture less durable and more prone to plaque accumulation. So you can think of porosity sort of like um, we think about bone. We want bone to be nice and dense, but osteoporotic bone has a lot more porosity and is thus a lot weaker. So we don't want to heat the uh, mixture of powder and liquid too quickly, otherwise we'll boil off the monomer, leaving these voids in the acrylic. All right, so we talked about the pink acrylic, now let's talk about the white teeth, the denture teeth. So we have two main uh, materials that denture teeth can be made out of, and that's acrylic and porcelain. So acrylic, one of the pros here is that it has better retention because it can bond to the acrylic resin of the denture base. We've been talking about acrylic this whole time as being the pink acrylic, and so the denture teeth can be also made of acrylic as well, and so you get better bonding because it's a lot of the same chemicals, and so you can have some nice bonding, and you don't have to worry so much about teeth that are just going to unbond and fall off. So porcelain is the other option, and it's typically more aesthetic than the acrylic teeth because um, they're more stain and wear resistant. The porcelain teeth are a bit more brittle. They can chip and break. They may wear the opposing teeth, can be a little bit rougher if you have a complete upper denture with porcelain teeth that's up against natural dentition on the lower arch. And since we can't bond porcelain teeth to the acrylic resin of the denture base, they have a very specific design feature to help keep them in place. For anterior teeth, that's called a uh, pin, which sticks out the bottom that gets locked into the pink acrylic to provide retention. For the posterior teeth, we have diatorics, or a retentive hole, usually with an associated smaller vent hole. So let me show you a picture to talk a little bit more about these and show you what I'm talking about here. So for the porcelain denture teeth, again, we're not having bonding. So for the anterior teeth, they add a little pin here that's able to lock this tooth in place when, it, um, when the acrylic resin is poured. And for the posterior teeth, instead of having a pin, there's this retentive hole, almost looks like an occlusal prep that was prepped into this denture tooth and a little vent hole so that the acrylic resin can pour in here, can vent out this way, and can provide nice retention. So these two features, the pin and the diatoric, can help hold porcelain denture teeth in place. So I'm gonna end the video and our discussion of complete dentures with a very simple, brief overview of how dentures are made at the lab, in case you're curious. You won't really get um, any board exam questions on this, but I'm just, com just including it in case you're interested. So the trial dentures are first sealed to the master casts, and they're packed into these flasks. The top half of the flask is called the cope, bottom half is called the drag. So what you do is you pour in plaster up to the land area of the master cast. That's that flat area of the master cast. So this is all plaster filling in underneath the flask. And then you would place a stone plaster 50-50 mix up to the occlusal surfaces of the denture teeth. 
So um, you want the teeth of the trial denture to be just sticking up over this layer. And then you've put another layer of stone plaster 50-50 mix on top. Now what's important here is these red lines signify the different layers, but this is also signifying a separating medium that's placed between each of these three layers and this is so that the layers can be easily they can easily be separated from one another. So you place this flask in boiling water to melt off the wax of the trial denture, leaving the teeth that are going to be invested in this top layer of stone. Then with the teeth exposed, you pack in acrylic resin to take the place of the melted wax and the record base of the trial denture. So now we're talking about mixing the powder and um, the liquid together. Get this pink acrylic, pour it in place while it's still malleable, and you place a plastic sheet over that, close the fl flask, compress it under very high pressure. Then the heat curing process takes place, um, and you put this whole flask into a curing tank at a very high temperature for several hours. And finally, you break the stone apart and you have the dentures inside. Um, and this could require some re-equilibration for occlusion, some finishing and polishing to take care of some flash of acrylic, and that's how you get your final product. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, we'll continue next by talking about partial dentures and all of the mechanics, uh, classification systems, and all of that fun stuff yet to come. So thanks so much for watching everyone, and we'll see you all in the next video.